So won't you come out here with me and chase this Rocky Mountain freedom? But that my high air you're breathing, wind you where the river rolls. Cody here with Off Grid Mountain Life. Uh, gonna be going over putting this bank final you know finally together with all the all the uh, wires on the bus bars and everything get everything tied together um, the last video we put the new VFX R3648 in and waiting to to get the optics RE set up but I figured we can get this thing ready to go before I tear the main lines out of that bank to throw in here. So I've already kind of started. I took this bus bar off because they had it oriented where it was this way where both main lugs right here were in the top. Well, if you want to have a good draw on your bank, you want to pull from the top on your positive or whichever top or bottom and then the opposite on your negative. So I'm gonna flip this around. But for me to do that, when I did that, this um, plastic guide cover was a little off, it was a little low. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen these isolators. And as you can see, there's like little slots here. And I'm gonna slide this down just a smidge. I mean, it's only about a an inch is what I need, I think. So I can cover it completely with the the cap we'll do that and then we'll start putting all the the individual wires on for the for the batteries torque them down to spec and get it to where i can just plug these into the old um, power line that goes to the old bank okay got the bus bar flipped around and I didn't slide this because it had holes drilled, so I just flipped the whole thing. Now I've got the negative main lugs on the bottom, positives on the top. And I put this first positive line in, got them torqued down. Uh, I put these silicone boots on. I got that idea from another person that was doing these banks and they work out great. They fit real nice and snug and it's a lot safer i feel than these stupid plastic flimsy deals but they're just silicone boots they fit a certain range they're done sold by recoil got them on amazon they come in packs of five unfortunately so you have to get two packs and just use one out of the other one if you're getting a full six bank and you just gotta kind of shove them on and they cover that hole real nice so it's nice and safe and then I actually also bent bent the connection point here and left these straight so when I put them on the battery it kind of stands off a little bit and then you can go over the top of the handle because when you put it through the handle it kind of hits at least on the positive side where the breaker is. So I wanted to just kind of keep it nice, free and clear. So I bent it up just a smidge and yeah, it looks good. So we'll get all the rest of them installed and see how it looks. All right, got everything buttoned up. These silicone caps make everything look real clean, professional. Got everything torqued down and I've got all the comm cables in and then I've got a computer set up here since I'm running an Outback system it won't communicate between the BMS and my system so I have to run it as a closed loop so I've got a little mini desktop here hooked up and we're gonna cycle these and we'll see if we're gonna communicate here cycling on all full charge now we're gonna go into here launch the BMS now you got to make sure I've already done this but I'll show you how to do this so you're gonna go search 
device manager to make sure you have the right port. So you have your port set in. I've got it USB on here. So you're gonna go down to device manager and then into ports right here. And then it says it is plugged into COM4, okay? So then you're gonna go in here into the config info and this port number you want to make sure it says COM4, all right? And it's gonna say connect here. So I'm already connected and then that make sure that it's reading the right port and then you're gonna go over here in battery info and right now it just has the address one so you're gonna clear sequence and I've got all the dip switches so this is the master this is zero one two three four five okay and on the manual it'll show you how to set the dip switches for the different number of batteries okay so you're gonna go into here and you're gonna start with zero, and you're gonna hit add. You're gonna do one, add, two, and so forth. There you go. So now I've got all six batteries, zero to five, and then it's reading everything, and it's showing me 100%. And then you can click up here, this multi-packs, and this will show all of them in kind of one screen. This is kind of busy, but what I'm gonna do, since I have to run this as a standalone and it won't communicate to my system, I downloaded TeamViewer here. So I can download the app on my phone and then I can remote access this desktop and check it wherever I want. So I can always see the status of my batteries. And then I also have the Optics RE set up for the Outback so I can monitor my solar panels and inverting and everything and control my generator from there. So I'll be able to monitor everything from a remote where before I, leaving the house, I was not comfortable because who knows, the generator could need to start or didn't start or um, you know the, the house faulted for whatever reason, and I wouldn't know until I got home. This way I'll know if something faulted, I can call my neighbor and can come over and, and, and help me out. Otherwise I'd be coming home to a dead house, possibly frozen house. So this is a good setup. I uh, kind of just thought of this to the fly, but I figured I can't be the only one that's running a different system than what Signature Solar recommends because they have their recommended ones that they communicate with, but they don't communicate with Outback. So there we go. We got it all set up. It's working. Everything's communicating. And next video, we are going to unhook the main lines off of my old bank and we'll feed it into the new and see how everything operates. Thanks for tuning in.